So um, I'm going to I'm going to uh, explain uh, the the role of data protection in your activity from a concrete scenario, a real scenario, a case study that Salva proposed me some uh, weeks ago when. I was preparing the, the, the presentation. But uh, first of all, before presenting this practical or real scenario, let, I would like to make a brief introduction about uh, what data protection means from the, of course, uh, legal perspective. First of all, this is a complex area. <laughs> all of these are uh, laws and other uh, tools different from laws, but also important uh, for the regulation. For example, you can see there a code of conduct for uh, pharma industry for uh, performing clinical trials. Uh, and this, is, uh, this has been approved by the uh, Spanish Data Protection Authority. And um, it's also a tool to uh, know how to apply all this regulation to a concrete sector or area clinical trials, for example. So uh, we have uh, European uh, regulation, we have Spanish regulation, we have general regulation dealing with data protection, but we also have specific regulation um, in, the, uh, in the clinical context that uh, it's also important, for example, the regulation of the clinical records, the patient rights. So this is a complex scenario. So uh, you don't need to know everything. You don't need to be an expert. You need to be aware that uh, this is this way and you need to ask for assessment. That's what you have to do. Ask for, know when you have to uh, ask for assessment in this complex uh, scenario. Uh, but, uh, as Alfonso just said, I have a positive uh, view of, of uh, all this um, regulation, all, all these requirements, because uh, it's very important that the spirit, the aim of the most important law in, in this framework, the, the aim, the spirit, uh, is positive regarding research, regarding scientific research, regarding the use of health and genetic data for research. Uh, the, the idea is that all this regulation cannot be an obstacle. It, 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 that's not the idea, no? We, we, this uh, is not an obstacle. It's a way to do things. It's a procedure. Mm? It's a tool. Um, to harmonize all the interest and stake, uh, the interest of science, the interest of scientists, the interest of patient, the interest of uh, society. So all uh, this is the way, this is the tool to harmonize all the uh, principles, interest uh, at, uh, at the stake. And this, th this is the GDPR, the uh, General Data Protection Regulation. This is uh, what it says. Uh, it says, uh, that uh, research with data, it's very good. It's, it, we, we need research with data. Huh? So this is the, this is the, the, the starting point. Huh? Um, the starting point also is that um, um, the GDPR is going to have a flexible uh, regime when we use the data for scientific research. Yeah? And that activity, scientific research, is understood as a, in a broad way. Yeah? Because uh, scientific research include um, searching for new knowledge, but also um, technological development, for example. Or, um, and includes um, public research, but also private research. So the activity is understood in a broad way, and to this activity we're going to find a flexible regime in the, uh, in the GDPR, in the, in the regulation. Um, the, the idea mm, in the GDPR is that um, um, we, ha we, we need, an, we need to, to find an uh, a way that um, fits the interest of science, but at the same time, 
uh, in this way we implement guarantees. Which guarantees? Those that are adequate for this uh, context. For example, the uh, revision or the opinion of an ethics committee of a project, this is a specific guarantee that is a guarantee applied for scientific research that could be an adequate guarantee in, in this sense, for example. No? Pseudonymization, uh, it's also an adequate guarantee because it's very, very often scientists uh, don't need to, to know the identity of the subject, but uh, you probably you need to keep the traceability to the subject for different reasons. Mm? So um, you have pseudonymized data. No? There's a link with the subject, but we, we, you cannot access the identity. Uh, if you use the data uh, this way, mm, this is a good guarantee, and uh, there, there are going to be flexible ways to use the data. And this is the case study which uh, Salva uh, proposed me some weeks ago, uh, uh, is that a researcher in, in this center uh, wants to conduct uh, cancer research and de detect uh, markers associated with, with age and uh, stage of colorectal cancer. The researcher is going to use uh, genomic data and other clinical data doesn't need to know the identity of the patients, but uh, the researcher needs to maintain the traceability. Um, the data are in hospitals of different uh, places, also in other countries uh, of Europe, so uh, you don't have the data. You have to ask for the data. Right? Um, you are going to analyze uh, that data and uh, you want to keep the data after the project. <laughs> uh, so uh, Salva asked me some questions. Uh, to which data does the regulation apply? Uh, I have to apply the regulation to all the, to, to all the data I'm, I'm, I'm using. Uh, uh, what quantity and, and type of data can be requested? I can ask for everything I can imagine. Huh? Um, which is the, my legal position, uh, who am I <laughs> in, this, in this map, and uh, according to this, which are my obligations, mm -hmm. Wh what do I have to do? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if I find something important for the health of the, pay of the, of the subject during my research, um, what do I do? Mm -hmm. And. Uh, what can I do with the data after the, after the project? So let's go to the first uh, question. Uh, to which data uh, do this regulation apply? To personal data. And personal data means any information related to an identified or identifiable, so there's a possibility, uh, natural person. Uh, when, uh, when we say that uh, the, a person is identifiable, that there's a possibility to identify someone, mm, uh, you have to think in reasonable means. So not uh, <laughs> because perhaps you, you, you can think that there's a remote possibility to know who is the person uh, behind that uh, whole genome sequence, no? uh, because that's unique. So you can think that's always a personal data. Uh, this is not true from the legal point of view. Mm? From the legal point of view, you have to think about if it is reasonable to think that that person is going to be identified by you. Mm? It, 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 are you going to do that, uh, you or other person? Eh? Uh, the, the one who is processing the data or other person, uh, it's going to identify that person and it's going to know that the data of that person uh, are in, uh, under your control. No? But this has to be interpreted in reasonable means. Mm? For example, if you signed a contract uh, saying that you are not going to identify a person, you are not going to try to do this, 
uh, this is important because it's not reasonable to think that you are going to break that compromise. Eh? For example, that, that, that's, uh, uh, that kind of things uh, is uh, the things you have to think about when, you, when we talk about uh, it's reasonable to think that that person is going to be identified. Mm -hmm. uh, pseudonymized data are personal data. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you cannot identify the person, but uh, the provider of the data can do it because uh, the provider keeps the, the code linking identity and data. In this case, you are processing personal data, even if you cannot identify that person. And it's, it's reasonable and it's easy to understand <laughs> because your processing can affect the data and can affect the power of the data to control uh, its in, uh, uh, her or his uh, own information. For example, if you find something important for the health of that person and you report that, can we say uh, this is not important for the person? Your processing uh, has had uh, uh, relevance for, for, for the life of the person, for the control of the information. So if there is a link um, and, that, and, and there's someone that can't link information with a subject, with identity, the processing is processing of personal data. Why are you keeping the link? Why? Because there's an interest in the re-identification. Otherwise, you don't need the link. So if you don't need the link, delete it. And it would be anonymous, uh, anonymized data. Mm -hmm. uh, if you need the link, it's OK. You can <laughs> go, go ahead. Eh? Uh, there's no problem. But you have to apply. Uh, this regulation. Um, if you uh, delete the link and you are using uh, anonymized data, attention, because these are relative concepts. Um, the test of anonymization has to be a dynamic test. What you now think it's uh, not personal data, perhaps next year could be um, a data that identifies the person. So uh, these categories are uh, dynamic, and uh, you have to test your uh, this concept during the period of processing. That's why uh, sharing uh, anonymized data needs also some guarantees, not guarantees derived, uh, not guarantees from the GDPR, but guarantees uh, to to be sure that you are not going to, you, to, to apply the GDPR, that you, you don't need to apply it. So um, there are two types of guarantees. The, the guarantees that are required by the GDPR because you are using personal data and other guarantees that are guarantees uh, that has to be dynamic mm, um, in order to be sure that those data uh, uh, still uh, anonymous one. Mm? Those guarantees are not those from GDPR. Mm? <laughs> are, uh, are, uh, just to be sure, you don't have to apply the GDPR. Um, well, again, this is, this is what I was uh, trying to, to explain. Uh, these concepts are dynamic ones and um, um, you have to implement guarantees uh, in any case. Uh, there are some speci special categories of data that has a, a specific regime in the, in the GDPR and in the Spanish uh, regulation. Those are sensitive data, and the point is that uh, sensitive data cannot be processed. This is the rule. It's forbidden to uh, store sensitive data. It's forbidden, it's the rule. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want to uh, obtain, store, use sensitive data, you have to just to justify uh, with an, um, a specific reason. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons um, named in the GDPR. 
um, one of the reason go to the last uh, paragraph. Uh, one of the reason that can justify the use of uh, sensitive data, genetic data, health data, one of that reason is scientific research. Uh, if you prove your, uh, your activity is a quality scientific research, is a, is a real scientific research that fulfills all the requisites and the interest of scientific research, uh, you are allowed to use the data even without consent. Consent is other uh, other possibility. Mm? Uh, you can use the data even without even without consent. Um, but the GDPR says that you need a specific legal provision in your national law that regulates this, and we have that in Spain. Mm? We have uh, a national law that allow the use of uh, sensitive data for scientific research, and if uh, there's a process of pseudonymization, you don't need consent. Mm? Um, if you don't need consent, this is not the same to say that you don't need to inform, because one thing is consent, that is a legal basis for the data, data uh, processing, and other thing is the right to be informed about the circumstances of the data processing. The right to be informed is a right, is a right of every subject, whatever the legal basis of the processing is. Mm? Uh, but the right to be informed uh, admits exceptions and uh, admits different modalities. For example, uh, making the information available in some way. Uh, so um, remember that the right of information is always a duty uh, to the, for the, the, the data subject, a duty from the data controller to the data subject, but can be, um, um, mm, can be a flexible, ¿cómo se dice flexibilizado? <laughs> can be, um, no, admits exceptions and modulations, okay? Uh, so, the, so the answer to this first question is, I, uh, almost to all the data you are using, you need to apply this, uh, this law, or you need to apply guarantees to be sure that in that moment, you don't have to apply the law. But uh, you have to be alert because perhaps in three years, those data uh, change the, the status. Mm. The, second, the second question was, uh, can I ask for any data I want? Mm. Can I ask for whole genome uh, because mm, I, I think it would be useful? And the answer to this question, I, I don't have a, a concrete answer. Mm. You have to answer to this question according to the principle of minimization. Uh, in Article 5 of the GDPR, we have the list of principles that is the most important article in all the regulation, this one. Mm? It seems very, um, mm, uh, it's not more, uh, concrete because we are talking about principles, but uh, here we have answer to a lot of questions. And we have the principle of di data minimization. Um, if you want to uh, store, obtain data, you have to demonstrate that the data are relevant and you need it to your purpose. So um, that's the answer. You have to justify why you need those data uh, for your research. If you cannot justify that, uh, you cannot uh, use the data, just in case, no. Just in case is, is not uh, lawful. Mm? Um, well, mm, I cannot uh, be more concrete. This is the principle and you have to, well, uh, you have to explain this to your uh, data protection officer, to the legal department and uh, to, to the 
um, research ethics committee also. Mm? These data are relevant and we need that they, mm, those data for the, for the research. So mm, that's, that's the, the answer. Yeah. And which is your legal position? Yeah? So uh, legal position or role in the uh, data flow. Because depending on your role, you have uh, some obligations or other or requisites, uh, and you have to you have to um, to know how you have to um, formalize your relation with the other actors in the in the data flow. Uh, you can be one of these two. Uh, actor. If you are the one that uh, decide uh, the aim, the objective of the data processing and the means uh, of the data processing, if you decide that, uh, you are the controller uh, of, the, of, the, um, of the processing, of the data processing. If you store, use, analyze the data on behalf or of other institution mm, who is the one that decide what to do with the data and how, you are a processor. And the difference is very important because the processor is just like, I like this expression, it's like an extension of the controller. So you don't need a legal basis. Um, you, mm, all the guarantees have to be implemented by the controller. Of course, you, <laughs> of course, you have to, to to implement security measures or whatever, no? And follow the instructions of the controller. But you don't need another legal basis. You don't need to justify your uh, anything because it's the controller who uh, who has to to do that. You are like an extension. No? Um, if you are if you are a, a data processor be, because you are giving a service to a controller uh, for the data flow from the controller to you you have to sign a data processing agreement eh? in that agreement uh, we need to know the conditions of the processing what uh, what the controller wants you to do with the data hmm? If you are not a processor because you decide uh, the aims and the means of the new processing, you have a, uh, a new uh, uh, step uh, in, the, in the data flow. It's a separate processing. In that case, you are a data controller. And uh, you have to sign also an agreement this is not compulsory in the GDPR, mm. this, this second one, but uh, well, you, um, it's a good practice to sign an agreement. Uh, and in that agreement, you, um, you have to justify your legal basis, uh, the guarantee of the rights of the subject. Those the, the, the guarantees of the rights of the subject now depends on you. Mm. So it's, it's different. Mm. Uh, your posi um, so in the in in each case you have to you have to sign an agreement, but the uh, the legal position is completely different, and the requirements are completely different. Um, Salva also asked me if uh, you need an ethics revision of the projects or of the processing, eh? and it depends on the role you uh, you have if you are the controller you need uh, an ethics revision it's compulsory in the spanish law uh, uh, not before but now it's compulsory even if your project is uh, only with data mm? there's no uh, physical intervention or there are no samples it doesn't matter if you use uh, data for uh, scientific research you need the revision of an ethics committee. And, but it's a duty of the controller. Mm. Um, if the controller has the uh, 
uh, the um, I mean from the from the point of view of the GDPR. Hmm? If the controller has the legal revision and the controller explain the f the data flow uh, and explain that the data are going to be here and um, explain the, the the conditions of the agreement, etc. The ethics revision, it's it's okay. Mm. If you are a controller, if you have your own uh, project, you need your own uh, ethics revision. So you have to apply for a revision to the ethics committee. I don't know which is the ethics committee. You, you have your own ethics committee? Then you have your own ethics committee. So you have to apply uh, for, uh, for an ethics revision. Sometimes the ethics committee of the institutions ask for a revision of all the data processing in the institutions. Um, well, it's a policy of the institution and mm, it's okay. Mm. But uh, I mean, uh, from the uh, legal point of view of the uh, guarantee in the GDPR and in the Spanish law on data protection is the controller, is the, is the is the researcher and not the processor, know who is giving a service. Mm? So it's important to think your, your, your legal position and the policy of your center. Mm? Because beside the legal requirements, uh, we have other kinds of requirements, ethical requirements, policy requirements. Mm? Other question was, uh, okay, uh, and I have to make a data protection impact assessment. The ethica, uh, data protection impact, impact assessment is uh, regulated also in the GDPR and is a study about the risk of the uh, processing. You have to study the risk and prepare a plan to face that, that risk. And that's, that's the uh, data protection impact, impact assessment. It's a duty of the controller. So again, it's important your legal position. Yeah. And uh, other in interesting thing is that uh, you don't have to make a data protection impact assessment in every project. You don't have to do that. Because if in the institution there is a, for example, a general um, evaluation of the risk of a processing Mm, in the same circumstances that you are going to process your data in your project, uh, I mean, there's a kind of umbrella impact assessment. You don't need to uh, make a new one. Mm? Uh, you just have to check that your processing fits with the circumstances that that uh, impact assessment, assessment is done. Mm? But you don't need new impact assess assessment each time. And when do you uh, have to do uh, this, this operation? Well, there's uh, some documents of the uh, authorities on data protection, the European and the Spanish authority, that, uh, with a list of situation. Uh, and if you have two of uh, two of the of these, uh, I think, uh, 10 or 11 uh, points, you must do the, the uh, impact assessment. And for example, if you use sensitive data of vulnerable subjects, you have to do uh, mm, an impact assessment. Mm. Or sensitive data in a large scale, you have to do uh, impact assessment, so it's possible you have the duty in your in your project. Yeah. Uh, the next point was, um, okay, what should uh, be done in case of incidental findings? And the answer is very easy. Contact the clinical data provider. You don't have to do anything more. Yeah. Uh, mm, um, this, is, this is not a right or um, issue of GDPR. This is reg this right to the return of results. Uh, it's regulated in the law on biomedical research. And this is a right that is not the right to access the data. The data subject has the right to know which data is being processed. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the right to access. And um, this is um, the, the data subject can ask the controller 
please give me a copy of the data uh, you are processing. We can discuss this uh, later. Eh? Give me a copy and um, for um, explain me uh, who has uh, access this uh, data or whatever uh, information the subject wants to know concerning uh, its um, her her own data or his own data. This is the right to access, but um, this is other rights. This is the right to return of results, and uh, this right doesn't need an application of the subject, but needs an positive action of the <laughs> of the scientist. Yeah? Uh, it depends on the um, uh, decision of the data subject that can uh, has to be um, asked before. What do you want to know? If I find something um, related to your health or important for your life, uh, uh, for example, for the planification of reproduction or whatever, do you want to know? And uh, it's compulsory to ask this before the analysis, mm, and you have to respect the decision. Not you, but the, the, the provider, <laughs> because it's uh, probably you don't know this because you don't have a contact with the subject. Mm? So, in the contract, in the uh, in the contract you signed with the data provider, this has to be explained how uh, how to proceed when I find uh, this kind of uh, uh, of uh, findings. Mm? Uh, because um, and I say you, you of course you cannot contact the subject. The report of the results, it's compulsory uh, that uh, are in, um, to be done in a, con in a clinical context. There's a right of genetic counseling, for example, to explain the relevance of the finding, to um, show alternatives or whatever. This is a clinician uh, who uh, has to, to do it. So what to do? Read your contract and contact the clinical provider. And uh, the last one is, uh, should the data be a resource when the research finishes? Let's go again to Article 5 of the GDPR and to the principle of storage limitation. Uh, the criteria is that uh, you, uh, you can keep the data for the purpose that justify the processing. Mm. Um, if you are a processor, you can keep the data in the conditions of the agreement. This is very easy. If you are the processor, just the conditions of the agreement with the data provider, the controller, because you are using the data on behalf of the controller. So um, just yes. look at the agreement. What happens if you are the controller? So if if you um, if you have decide, decided the uh, mm, aim and the means of the processing, no? there's a, there's a, a flexibilization of the storage limitation if it is set in Article Five. Um, if the if you want to keep the data for scientific uh, research. Mm. This is a principle um, and it's okay, you can keep the data but with some guarantees. Mm. The first guarantee is information to the subject. Mm. So the subject mm, uh, has to know that the data are going to be storage for a long period. Mm. The second one is you need to have a purpose. Uh. Um, uh, um, the purpose, for example, could be make a cohort. That could be a, a purpose, but this is different to a research project. <laughs> so uh, the storage has to be a purpose. Mm? Could be a scientific research, yes, but uh, you have to concrete. You have to explain the concrete purpose. Mm? And you would need al also an ethics revision. So. You can keep the data mm, 
after the project, mm, but with some conditions. Mm. Uh, for scientific research, yes, but uh, please concrete a little bit more the purpose yeah, and uh, inform subjects. And that's all. I, I wait for the questions and thanks so much for being here. And I, uh, perhaps we would need to meet again, not me or other experts, because <laughs> we have the, the European Health Data uh, space regulation uh, that is going to be published in next uh, weeks because the procedure has finished. So we have the, the text now. Um, and that's all. Thank you. Um, the question is how can we, do I repeat the question here? Do, do, uh, the question is uh, how to separate right to information and consent. Can I give an example uh, when I don't need consent but uh, there's a duty to inform, um, more or less? How, how can we separate inf uh, information and consent? And why, okay. Um, okay, because inform, well, the first thing is that this is hard to understand, this is difficult to understand also in uh, biomedical uh, research by the ethics committee because there's a tradition to talk about informed consent and when we talk, uh, when we talk about information, we think about consent. Information, be why? Because we have to consent. You have to inform because uh, you, afterwards, the person is going to consent. No? So, uh, yeah, because for scientific research, traditionally, mm, we need always consent. Uh, you, you cannot do uh, um, something in the body of a person without consent. Uh, no? So we, we, um, mm, we, we cannot imagine scientific research in a person without consent. No? Okay, but things are different because uh, I'm talking about GDPR huh? because, uh, I'm, for example, uh, clinical trials. The legal basis for processing data in clinical trials is not consent. It's a legal duty. Why? Because once a person consents to participate in a clinical trial, it's a duty of the uh, researcher to keep the data for a long period, eh? because pharmacology, whatever, no? So it's, it's a duty to, so you, you have to be informed about the conditions of the data storage, uh, but you, don't, you, you cannot decide about it. If you are a patient and you go to a, a hospital, uh, you decide if you go or not to a hospital. But once you enter in a hospital, your data are going to be stored in a clinical record because it's, it's a duty 
of the hospital. So the legal, you, you, cannot, you cannot say, no, I don't want, I want uh, to be, uh, I, I want this treatment, but I don't want my data to be in the uh, clinical record. You, you cannot say that. But you have to be informed because you, for example, you have to be informed because sometimes sometime you, you, you can ask for access to the clinical record. So if you, to guarantee your rights, you have to be informed. Information is related to transparency, not to autonomy. It's to transparency. Mm? But traditionally, in the, for clinical research, information is, we, we are all, always uh, thinking in consent, informed consent. Mm? So uh, what I was trying to say is that you need a legal basis that could be consent, could be a legal duty, could be scientific research, Always the subject has to be informed. Uh, mm, of course, if the legal basis is, co is consent, of course, has to be informed. <laughs> but also, for example, if the data is um, has to be stored for in an um, emergency, uh, public health emergency, you cannot say, no, I don't want my data, but you have to be informed because I don't know. Um, yeah, um, yeah. In, for example, we can ask for consent to participate in research, for example, to a clinical trial, but to decide that uh, no, the data processing uh, must be uh, started. Uh, yeah, that's examples how we separate one thing another. Kids. Yeah. That that's a complicated answer, also. But uh, okay, minors, minors. Uh, from a 14 years old, uh, the person can um, consent or exercise their rights. Mm? So it's um, it's has the mature in Spain eh? because it can be different in some uh, countries. In Spain, is 14 years, mm? unless there is a particular or sectoral law saying other thing, but in general it's 14. Mm. Um, in scientific research, as uh, the general rule is that uh, parents, or no parents, but the re represents, um, are involved in the, uh, in the process, mm. the rule is that <coughs> there are two consents, mm, or two, two informations, no? There's a, a duality. Mm. And you have to respect the desire of the minor. Mm. But if the minor has enough maturity, for example, if a kid of five years says, no, 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 I don't want this, I don't, and cry, because uh, she, she doesn't want uh, que le pinchen con una aguja, I don't say. Yeah. Un pinchar. Ah, OK. Uh, that's not relevant. Mm. But. Uh, from 12, for, ex for example, it's, it's relevant. So again, it's, um, the rule is to involve the kid uh, depending on the maturity of the kids and uh, respect the desires if there's enough maturity. It's more or less. Another category could be used to be identified. Let's suppose it's not 
passport to be identified by extreme sensitive, but it is anonymized. Should we worry about it? Sensitive data, it's a subcategory of personal data. Even if it doesn't, even if it's anonymized. Yeah, yeah. So sensitive, when we talk about sensitive data, we talk about personal data. But as I said, you uh, you need to to uh, uh, implement guarantees and a dynamic test also if you are uh, processing anonymous data. And if the data are, sens are sensitive data, you can think that there's th the risk is higher, for example, for the for the rights of the of the subject. So the circumstance that the anonymous data are sensitive uh, has an impact, of course, in this test, dynamic test of the evaluation of the uh, risk of the proceeding. Okay, so anonymous data, if it's not sensitive, no GDPR, it's fine. But if it is sensitive, you can start again. No, 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 no. Anonymous data is not GDPR, even if there's uh, related to health or gen or our genetic data. Okay. Yeah, sensitive data, we cannot talk about sensitive data when we talk about anonymous data. <laughs> because anon because sensitive data is a subcategory okay. of personal data. Okay. Mm. It's, a, it's a question of wording, I think. But I don't know. Okay, mm. let's Well, the yeah, the processor has to sign uh, an agreement, and uh, well, I it's important to know that the, mm, the the origin of the data is lawful. So, <laughs> uh, of course, so. Um, you should say in the agreement, the controller guarantees that the origin of the data is lawful. So as a processor, you do have duties also, mm? but n n not the same as the controller because you are an extension. Okay, mm? let me, let me another, another little thing for clarification. So you say the controller is to decide what's gonna be done yeah. and he tells the processor to do it. Yeah. Imagine I, Ideally, we would like to use processor because the hospital would be the controller yeah. and will ask us to do analysis. Yeah. Does that mean that we cannot come up with hypotheses or things to investigate? Yes, because that's your know-how and that's the reason of the, the hospital wants your service. Okay. Because, so yes, the hospital can say, yes. You, you, can, you can make a creative work. Yeah, yeah. The what? Excuse me? A procedure for the anonymization, you mean? Uh, the, the for, for, for putting watermark on the data. Okay. So you can have a graph that will be anonymous and then the test will show that it's anonymous. I, I don't understand the question, excuse me. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think this is a very technical um, procedure. There's no, there's no a concrete um, tool, a concrete procedure. Is the one you think it's adequate? 
there's a guide of the um, of the Spanish agency about anonymization or uh, concrete techniques uh, that can be uh, found in the internet. But uh, uh, it's up to you. It's no, no. As far as I know, no. It's up to you. An adequate guarantee. No. So the question is, no, no, the obligation is uh, for the controller. The obligation, you mean the obligation to inform? Well, the, no, the, the ob no, the obligation of the state is to control. There is to there's uh, um, authorities that to um, to um, to supervise all the procedures, but the duties uh, are from the controllers, yeah, because are the ones that uh, are processing the the data, yeah. No, there's no duty for well, there's duty for the public administration if the public administration is the controller, of course, that can be. But uh, no, the, the duties are uh, for controllers. The duty of the states is to uh, supervise the, the fulfillment of the regulation. It makes sense. It's, it's this way in every activity. Yeah, there's authorities. Yeah. Well, the information, the, the, the authorities, the national authorities, among their duties that to supervise is also to inform. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Well, in that sense, yes, but uh, it's not a very concrete obligation. They can make uh, sp spots or what. It's a general. It's a general information to the population. Among the duties of the author the national authorities, is yeah, this kind of inform general information, and, mm, but not yeah. I think uh, all the stakeholders uh, has learned. No? And for example, the initial fear of the scientific community or professionals, mm, I think it's not that way now. No? Because at the same time, for example, the um, ethics committee also have learned because it's difficult from <laughs> to, to apply all this regulation and requisites from there, mm, from, from from nothing. You have to learn. So, yeah, I think now it's it's um, 
things are better from different, uh, all different dimensions. But this is going to be, again, uh, complicated because the new regulation that we are going to have. In, uh, yeah. And things are going to change a little bit. If there is an anonymization, uh, this doesn't apply because GDPR doesn't apply. But even if the data are personal data, for example, pseudonymous data, the limitation of the period storage, it's more flexible in, <laughs> in scientific research. We, it's, it's a kind of principle, it's a principle of the GDPR. Uh, you have to apply guarantees, but uh, this principle is, is more flexible. But if the data are anonymized, you don't have to apply this. Yeah, no, I think that that's wrong. Not to, <laughs> not to, not to um, keep the data, not to respect other principles, fair principles. That there's life beyond GDPR. There are other things very important as, as well. Eh? So uh, yeah, um, I think we we have to go that um, that way. It. Um, I I would like to say that we are waiting uh, for two years. Um, to an opinion of the European uh, um, uh, Data pro pro uh, Processing Supervisor, the authority, the European authority, we are waiting for an opinion concerning the uh, data processing for scientific research. They promised to give that opinion, clarifying things that they say in a preliminary statement that was, uh, that uh, the, the, it was very complicated. There was very complicated things uh, in scientific research and in the GDPR, and we, we are going to publish an opinion soon, and we, we're still waiting for two years. So uh, we need that opinion, and uh, I try to, uh, I try to, 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 um, uh, to, to be like, uh, this is more or less clear, or I have, I know things and I have everything very clear, but not, that's not true. <laughs> They are complicated. They are uh, complicated things, and not everybody uh, thinks the same as me. And you know, it's complicated. We need uh, an official guideline, uh, but we are waiting for that.
So the, the question is? <laughs> You need, you need more. You need to um, guarantee the rights of subject. So you, have to, you need to have a protocol on how you guarantee the exercise of the right. Um, you, have to, you need a protocol about uh, security measures. You have, uh, yeah, it, it's more than that. It's more training. Uh, it's more than um, risk assessment. Uh, it's, it's more than that. It's, you have to read all the duties of the controller and you have to fulfill that. that uh, you have to collaborate with the authority. The, there's a big list. And uh, it's important to know that the controller of the processing is the institution. Mm? It's not the scientist. The scientist is, uh, use, is an authorized uh, person. No? But uh, all the duties is, uh, are institutional duties. Uh, so yes, the center needs, needs a policy, needs a policy on data protection. Part of the policy is the uh, mm, training, uh, etc. But it's more than that.